Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, March 21st. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 164 days. The game against Michigan in 254 days. All right. Ohio State about to take the practice field for the fourth time this spring. That'll happen on Thursday morning inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Afterwards, we're going to get a chance to talk to a number of Buckeye players and assistant coaches. So you can look forward to that on Thursday around 11 a.m. give or take at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. But before we get to practice number four, we got to take a little look back at practice number three. Afterwards, we got a chance to talk to Ohio State head coach Ryan Day. And we have talked to Ryan Day for a bunch of years now, started as an assistant coach in 2017, took over as the head coach in 2019. So we have seen pretty much every possible Ryan Day mood, every possible Ryan Day interview kind of circumstances. I got to tell you, Tony Gerdeman and I were talking after the interview on Tuesday and it was like, Ryan Day seemed like he was in a really good mood which generally, I mean, yeah, it's spring, it's early. The pressure's not exactly on. Games are still several months away. But a coach who is real, real worried about something on his team is generally not in a good mood this time of year. Ryan Day, I mean, you can judge for yourself. We're not going to start with a real good mood question, however. So let's start with kind of maybe the biggest question going into the into the day. Ryan Day, his first chance to talk to him after the departure of Tony Alford for Michigan of a big deal. So when was Ryan Day made away, aware of Tony Alford's impending departure for Michigan? And where do things stand right now in terms of the replacement hiring? I was made aware uh, last week. And um, and so now we're into the process of, you know, identifying replacements. Um, excited about the group that, you know, we've already identified and, um, you know, I'm going to be thorough in the process. I think the good news is, you know, we're not in a situation where we have to make a quick decision based on, you know, uh, recruiting or the portal or anything like that. So, um, you know, I talked to the the uh, running backs, you know, they're great. Um, they're, they're actually going to be, you know, part of the process. I'd like for um, the part of the interview process for the running backs to, to meet the candidates. Um, you know, obviously, ultimately, I'll make the decision and Chip will be a huge part of it. But but the input of the uh, the running backs will be important as well. But but they've been great. And uh, it was actually fun today. I, I took the running backs and, um, you know, coached them out there today. So that was fun. Um, and we had a really good practice. As soon as the Tony Alford news broke, I think there was a lot of concern around Ohio State fans that, hey, he was going to take the playbook with him up to Ann Arbor and Michigan was going to have, you know, get the best of Ohio State because they'll have you know all of their secret plays to beat Michigan this year already. I talked to Ross Fulton on one of the morning shows last week about that. He kind of poo-pooed some of the concerns there. And here's Ryan Day's answer on his level of concern that Tony Alford was going to bring a lot of information about Chip Kelly's impact on this Ohio State offense up to Michigan with him. You know, we're nowhere near where we're going to be as we head down the road. Uh, this is, you know, that was two practices in, in the spring and um, you know, a lot of what we did was um, you know, what we've done in the past. And then we sprinkled in a couple of things that Chip's done, but um, there's just so much more that he has that's uh, out in front of us. But I think more importantly, like this, this could look differently uh, moving forward in terms of our offense, just, you know, how we're doing things, who's in what spots, you know, the, you know, we have really good receivers. We have really good tight ends. We have good running backs, but Ultimately, it comes down to what the quarterback can do well, the types of throws that he can make. Um, you know, the run game will look different. It just will. And that's a long time and a long journey to get to next November. So, um, you know, I, I just think there's going to be so many twists and turns along the way that I think, you know, and now with the quarterback communication, uh, being able to use that, which we've utilized the first three practices, that's been good. That certainly allows us, um, you know, more flexibility as we call plays. All right. So now let's move on to a little bit of this year's team. and. The, let's start with the offensive line. This time last year, Ryan Day, there was like open concern, like very openly talking about being concerned about the offensive line. Really, they were a lot of unsettled positions. It was not a good situation. And they were talking about it pretty openly in a way that you really just don't generally hear coaches talk about concerns this time of year. So now with that as sort of your background, that that was a year ago. Let's talk about this year's offensive line. The left side of the offensive line, pretty much settled. It's going to be Josh Simmons at left tackle and Donovan Jackson at left guard and something unless something really surprising happens. So let's talk about the right side of the offensive line. You know, this is this is early. Ryan Day was just asked about the right side of the offensive line, where things are sort of shaking out right now. And again, very early in spring, only after the third practice. But just 
listen to what he says, but also listen just to the tone of his voice as he's saying this. And if you're watching on YouTube, just watch the body language. This is a totally different tone than we heard from Ryan Day talking about the offensive line a year ago. Yeah, today was the first day in pads, so uh, it's hard to evaluate anything until you get the pads on. And, you know, we're going to evaluate that right side really hard, really close, like you're saying. Um, I can't say we're in a different place now than we were about a month ago because there really isn't enough evaluation to go off of. Um, but we are trying to figure out what that is. Now, I will say Josh Fryer uh, had one of the best off seasons of anybody in the in the building. Now, we had some bunch of guys who had really good off seasons, but he, he stuck out. So if he can continue to to you know stay in the the, the shape that he's in right now, um, I think he's going to have a really good spring and take that next step. If that's the case, uh, then a big spot will be at right guard, and you know Luke's in there now. But we got a bunch of guys you know moving through there. Uh, but if if Josh can you know possibly move into guard and then Tegra moves in, if Tegra makes a push, then then that'd be great as well. So like you said, we have a few guys in there. You know Austin's you know moving at, at, right now. He's at left guard. We could move them over to right if we needed to. So it, it's a very tight competition in there. Um, you know, I'm hoping that we have you know some clarity as we you know get towards the end of spring, um, and and then it continues into the preseason. But um, I guess the good news is we do have some guys with experience along the line. You know, between Donnie and Josh and Josh, they both have played a bunch, and Carson's played, and so has Seth. So um, you know, hopefully in the next week or so, we got a little bit more to go off of three of the names on that right side of that offensive line that could end up filling those two starting spots. Josh Fryer, Luke Montgomery, Tegra Shibola. They always talk about finding the best five. So could any of those three guys end up playing that right guard spot, that right tackle spot? I think so. I, I think that um, Tegra is probably more of a tackle uh, than he is a guard. He has played some guards, so he could do that. Um, uh, but both um, Josh and Luke have both played guard and tackle. So we're going to try to figure out who the best five are. We've always done that um, and figure, you know, who who plays the tackle best, who plays the guard best and go from there. On the other side of the ball, on the defense, boy, there might even be fewer questions than on the offense. One of the big areas where they've got to replace a couple starters is at linebacker. Tommy Eichenberg, Steel Chambers, both off to the NFL. Cody Simon is a returning starter of some sort. He played a bunch in 2021, started about half the games last year as well. So he's, you know, expected to play a bunch coming this fall as well. So what about the rest of the linebackers, guys with Cody Simon, guys like CJ Hicks, Sonny Styles, and Gabe Powers? So very competitive in, in each team drill. You see us um, for the first, you know, we call them racks uh, in 11 personnel. And so then we'll see, we'll, you'll see nickel in the game there. Um, you're seeing you know, a lot of guys rotate in and out around there. But then when, when you put 12 in the game um, and we get into base personnel on defense, now you're seeing, you know, Sonny do a little bit of the, that Sam linebacker. So he has some flexibility there. And again, this is another one, you know, I don't have a ton of updates because we just, today was the first quick day in pads, but, but you are seeing those guys learn those positions. And then hopefully in the next week or so, you're seeing progress in certain areas. And then, you know, Jim and the defensive staff will sit down and say, okay, here's, we need to invest our time moving forward. And these are big decisions in the off season. You know, the, the season's a long way away and it's a long way away to get to where we need to be. But the decisions that are made over the next month or so are going to be critical in terms of the development of our team. During one of the earlier answers, you heard Ryan Day mention the helmet radios. That is one of the many, many, many new and different things coming this fall to college football. And this one's kind of flown a little bit more under the radar compared to, you know, Oklahoma and Texas being in the SEC and the whole new Big Ten and all that kind of stuff. New college football playoff format. Compared to all that, helmet radios seems like not that big a deal. But when you look at how it could impact things on the field, well, could be a pretty, pretty, actually a pretty big deal. So as they're just sort of getting used to those things, and what are they allowed to do right now? How much are they able to use helmet radios during the spring? How are they using them right now? You're going to hear Ryan Day's answer on that. And then a quick follow-up from our buddy, Tony Gerdeman. Yeah, so they're allowing us um, three um, you know, devices in the helmets per practice. Um, which is a little bit difficult because we have more than three quarterbacks. And then we also have the defensive side of the ball. So um, I wish there was more available, but there isn't. So um, right now we're working with three. And, um, you know, right now we've worked with the offensive side. They're going to be practices where we, we, you know, give the three devices to the defensive side so that Jim can work with that. But, um, you know, it's it's been good to kind of work through that chip. Well, dealt with it when he was in the NFL. And so he has experience in that. Um, the easy thing is when you're in a huddle, 
you just call the play, the quarterback calls the play, and that's simple. But there are other ways to to build in different kind of hybrid between signals and calling it into the quarterback. Um, there's verbal, and then there's then there's the physical signal. So uh, we'll use you know a bunch of different ways to do it. We'll use wristbands, we'll use signals, uh, we'll huddle, we'll try to find as many ways to be uh, be creative in that area. And it's something new in college. So each day we're learning a little bit more about it. Um, we're getting feedback from the quarterbacks and from the players. Like today, it would be what just the three quarterbacks would have it, and then you got it. Maybe Thursday, Cody and Gabe, and you got it right. That's yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So that um, the tricky thing we learned early on was uh, we had two huddles going on early. On. I think you guys were practice the one day we were doing formations and so chip was calling it in to to the guys in the one huddle and poor lincoln he's got it in his head and i'm calling him the plays and there was a voice in his head he thought he was going crazy for a second so he said coach i gotta take this helmet off so we learned that we we can only have one quarterback getting the call at once um but uh but no i think the good thing about it is the quarterbacks are hearing the call you know so if let's say will's up there and or devin's up there lincoln's getting the call in his head he's also seeing the signal Talked a lot about the departure of Tony Alford earlier in the show. Now the question, of course, who's going to replace him? So we'll get to that one in a minute. But temporarily, who's replacing Tony Alford? Well, that's a gentleman by the name of Ryan Day. He's never actually coached running backs before, but he's running the running backs room right now. And this is another one where I just want you to listen to the tone of his voice as he's answering this question. Just sort of ask, like, how, you know, how's that going? You're coaching the running backs now. You've never done it before. How's that going? And you always hear head coaches kind of wistfully talking about how they really miss getting to just coach the players and, and just teach and, you know, go through film with guys and just, you know, be coaches, all the stuff you got into coaching to do. You don't get to do a lot of it when you're the CEO of a big program like Ohio State. So just listen to Ryan Day and just in his voice, how much he is absolutely loving being the temporary running back coach at Ohio State. It's been great. Yeah, I think, you know, I, we went in there and um, put up the first play and the first play, I, I, I think I went off for 20 minutes on one play. I think they, <laughs> some of the guys are looking around like, oh boy. Um, but it was great. I, I think it's going to be good for them to see it through the eyes of a quarterback. I think it's really good for them in the passing game. I think it's really good for them overall to understand from a, from a, you know, a high view on things. So we've had great meetings. We have a very intelligent group in that room. Uh, they're really good. They're diligent about taking notes. Um, again, I think it's the best running back room in the country. So uh, whoever we hire is going to have an unbelievable opportunity and a great group of guys. Well, no matter how much Ryan Day loves being the running backs coach, they will eventually have to hire a replacement for Tony Alford. If he gave up play calling, he certainly will have to give up being the temporary running backs coach. So when they're finding whoever is going to replace Tony Alford, how much does things like recruiting play into that decision in terms of who they're going to hire? Yeah, I think when you're uh, you're bringing anybody into the program, you're trying to figure out, you know, what is their expertise? Um, You know, I I shared this with the team. I think it's important. You know, we want to be the best team we can possibly be next year. Um, we have a bunch of talent, but it's not about individuals. It's about the team. You need each other in order to, to reach a goal. That's what's special about football. So, you know, the running back coach has to be an expert at coaching the running backs. You, know, you have to bring value every day. When you stand in front of a group of men, especially a group like we have in that room, you know, you have to, your competency has to be at a high level. You know, when you, when you stand in front of anybody in this building, you got to know what you're talking about. And it's about building trust. And you do that through competency, through connection with somebody, and then your character and who you are as a person. And so when you have trust, you can, you can really um, you know, develop guys at a high level. Now, the recruiting part is very, very important. Uh, and that's about building relationship and building trust through the recruiting process. Um, would we like somebody that has recruited at a high level already here? Yeah, I think that would be ideal. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you know, that's going to make the best player or uh, excuse me, the best coach for that position. You know, I think about myself coming in here. I had never recruited at a place like Ohio State before, Um, but, you know, it worked out for me. I think some other guys have been in that same situation before. You know, Brian Hartline had never recruited at this level before. He played at this level, but he didn't recruit here. And so um, while it's good to have the experience, we want to make sure we get the right guy. And we're being very, very thorough in the interview process. Uh, We're going to ask a lot of questions. We're going to take as much time as we need and make sure we get the right guy. Well, the Buckeyes will be back on the practice field on Thursday morning, and then we will be back at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center doing some interviews afterwards, talking to some players, talking to some coaches. Should have a lot of good new information for you after practice number four of the spring. That's coming up all on Thursday morning at BuckeyeHuddle.com and at YouTube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. 
We hope to see you there. If you're watching this one on YouTube, we would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button. That helps other folks find these shows. Always just a nice, helpful thing you can do for us. If you're listening on your podcast platform of choice, a five-star rating and review helps there as well. Make sure you also check us out at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Lots of uh, great content from Pro Day on Wednesday, interviews with a whole bunch of Ohio State players, coaches, great interview with Will Howard, the uh, hopefully, you know, hopeful Ohio State 2024 starting quarterback. He's in a battle with Devin Brown right now. And then, of course, with uh, a surprise guest, C.J. Stroud, old friend of the program, C.J. Stroud, who's uh, had quite a pro career for himself, swung by on Pro Day and actually got had a nice long interview uh, after uh, after all the other interviews were done. You can find that at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Some great stuff there from Pro Day. Make sure you check that out. And of course, check us out at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.